Dmitry Medvedev, Ukraine will have to give up even Kiev for the sake of joining NATO. Should Ukraine agree to relinquish disputed territories for the sake of joining NATO, it will have to give up even Kiev, the deputy chairman of Russia's Security Council, Dmitry Medvedev, said on his Telegram channel. While commenting on a remark by the director of NATO's Secretary General's private office, Stian Jensen, to the effect that Ukraine might become a member of the alliance in case of territorial concessions to Russia, Medvedev wrote, Why? The idea is curious. The only question is that all of allegedly their territories are highly disputable. To enter the bloc, the Kiev authorities would have to give up even Kiev itself, the capital of ancient Rus, he added. Well, the Ukrainian authorities would have to move the capital to Lvov, then. If, of course, the Poles agree, Medvedev remarked. The director of NATO, Secretary General's private office, Stian Jensen, said earlier that Ukraine could become a NATO member if it agreed to cede territories that it currently refused to recognize as part of Russia. Mykhailo Podolyak, Zelensky's top advisor to the head of the office of the president of Ukraine, denounced Jensen's suggestions on X, formerly Twitter. Trading territory for a NATO umbrella, it is ridiculous. That means deliberately choosing the defeat of democracy, encouraging a global criminal, preserving the Russian regime, destroying international law, and passing the war on to other generations, Podolyak wrote. He added, murderers should not be encouraged by appalling indulgences. A spokesperson for Ukraine's Ministry of Foreign Affairs also publicly rejected the suggestion, calling Jensen's proposal absolutely unacceptable in a statement posted on Facebook. We have always assumed that the alliance, like Ukraine, does not trade territories. The conscious or unconscious participation of NATO officials in shaping the narrative regarding the possibility of Ukraine's giving up its territories plays into the hands of Russia. Foreign Ministry spokesperson Ole Nikolenko wrote in part, 